hello everybody and welcome here we are I'm in the car actually I'm gonna head on up the road because I've got to see to one of my signs um, so I'm just uh, we're just leaving here now um, whoops I'm the car in the, f in the forward gear <laughs> That's our place there where we live, that's where the gallery is. And as you can see, you know, we're, we're right on this little, this small side road. And um, yeah, I've got to try to make some improvements and I am making some improvements to my sign up at the top of the road because uh, it's vitally important that that sign gets seen by by people, and um, as they're going down the road, and, and that people are prepared to make a deviation down this side road to our small gallery. So I'm not really I'm not really into doing these shows to be honest having to pack up all the pots and all the equipment and go and do these shows I mean I'm sure some of them are more profitable than others but I always have been a firm believer that it's always good to be able to get the general public to come to you um, in your locality where you've got your studio where you've got your workshop and, and set up in your in your home, either in an outbuilding or set up a, uh, a small gallery display. So, and pretty much wherever I've made pots and have a small pottery, whether it be in England, Spain, or or here in the U.S., that's always been my intention to be able to sell direct. It's always good to sell direct to the public isn't it? We don't want to have to be going through middlemen if possible. Yeah so just coming up to the top of the top of the road here where we join a road that's called 22 which runs I believe it runs east-west between sort of, well, if we turn right at the end of this road, it takes us to Huntingdon. If we turn left, it takes us um, to Altoona. So here we are, we're coming up to the top of the road. Uh, I just got to park a bit short here. Uh, my sign is just there. Okay, folks, so you're going to have to bear with me. I've got to do a little bit of chopping around here. I hope we don't get too... Um, first thing I want to do is... What I've got is some um, some reflectives, the red reflectives that I want to put on the... put onto the sign. So let's get out of the car. I'm just going to get my tripod out here and we're going to affix the of course I should have done this before shouldn't I try and attach the tripod. So, so you can see my sign, you can see my sign up there and
what I've got to do is get it what I want to do is get it so it's it's more noticeable I don't know if you can see but I put I put onto the sign already some reflectives or just maybe we can Okay, so yeah, I've got some reflectives here, you see. The post is is um, is bolted is bolted to here. coming here okay. getting some funny looks there <laughs> As you see a lot of cars go up and down this road. At night time. And at night time if they can't see the sign, it's no good, is it? So I've got to do the same on the other side, haven't I? Stick these guys on the other side.
Okay folks, we've done it. Let's hope, let's hope we catch some fish. <laughs> Yeah. Dee 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 dee. Get in there, right. Well. I hope that's going to make some difference. I just thought, you know, they say, they say, I don't know if it's true, but they say for some people who regularly pass a signpost, they need to see the signpost at least 10 times or something before they decide well, okay. Well, maybe we've got time today. Let's let's uh, let's let's check out this place. So, maybe you're somebody you've put up a sign, and you may think, well, it's not working. Nobody's coming. Don't think that because uh, for sure people are seeing it. They're taking it in. It just takes a bit of time to sink through. You know, people's skulls into their brains and. Um, and that's what's happening. You begin to see the fruit a little bit afterwards, but you you know you, you have to invest that time. That's what I'm saying. So don't give up. Okay, folks, let's get this car into reverse. I think we can turn around here. Hopefully. We're actually located one mile down this road. Maybe you've got a little pottery that's off of a, a more main road and uh, maybe, you, maybe, you, you, maybe you need to put up a sign at the end of your road. And uh, let the public know that you're there because it's time for us potters to take our place, isn't it, in society once more. You know, as needed, as needed people making utilitarian items that people can use um, on their tables, in their gardens, in their kitchens. Let's do away with plastic flower pots. Let's offer decent handmade pottery flower pots. They're much nicer to look at, much nicer to handle, more ecologically friendly. Let's do away with. I'm trying to. In, in our lives, we're trying to do away with plastic as much as possible because I see plastic as a lot of it's not biodegradable. It's ending up in the oceans, the rivers and the oceans, and it's it's a hazard. It's a hazard for everybody. It's a hazard for wildlife, for birds, for fish that ingest it getting into the food chain, it's getting into the fish that end up on our table, are full of PCBs and poisons. So let's all do our part to be a potter in our community, for our community, for our for our local area. Wouldn't it be great if all the people 
Danone and all these other yogurt manufacturers, they suddenly started demanding. Um, they suddenly started demanding. Oh, look at my sign there. It doesn't look very good, does it? it needs a, a fresh lick of paint. Yeah, the, the yogurt manufacturers like Danone and others, if they started demanding and wanting ceramic pots, you know, we have, we as potters might have a new lease of life. <laughs> Well, we're back, back here in the studio, and another day. So folks, there we are, in a nutshell. <laughs> well, it's good that you can see, you know, that uh, we, we all got to to struggle, haven't we, sometimes to get our to get our wares into the public eye, and either to bring take our wares, and we've got to go and try to sell them at some show, or we can stay at home and try and bring the general public to us, attract them down to our our studio, and um, I like I like the idea of that personally more because it. You know, I can stay at home and I can work, and then if somebody comes, well, the bell rings, and I go down to the down to the gallery, and then I can talk to them. And uh, you know, there's nothing like a potter selling his wares on his own home turf. <laughs> you know, you don't always feel so comfortable, do you? And you've got to go out to a show, you know, and you sort of amongst all these sort of strange people in a strange place, and you've got to sort of set up your set up your your booth or whatever. Um, in fact, this this year, what I what I hope to do is to be able to take one of my potter's wheels and have it down where I've got the woodshed at the moment. I'm clearing out all the wood, and I'm going to put a potter's wheel in there. So it's right next to the right next to the uh, the gallery, so people can just nip next door and see me working on the on the treadle wheel then they can see, they make the connection, then they say, ah, oh, look, here are the pots, and look, oh, lo and behold, here is the potter. <laughs> you see? And people love watching potters at work. It's very educational, especially for, for, um, for children. And, and, and for a lot of adults as well, a lot of adults have never seen a pot actually being made on a wheel. Sometimes it's the first time. So it's nice to be able to offer that um, as well as the finished product, actually show them how it's made. Okay, well, Simon Leach here saying, keep practicing. Bye-bye. <laughs>